Well, you're very welcome back. Are you looking for a nice winter warm meal that's sure to warm the heart? Well, Paul Knapp has, oh no, a mushroom winter. I mean, I don't like, I don't like to sound disappointed, Paul, but no, I no, just no, not yeah, mad about you mushrooms. You really picked me up there, didn't you? I'm sorry. Listen, put it on a positive, there's no trace of tofu. Okay, well, let's win-win. We're going to win. Okay, so what we're making is a winter kind of a, a winter stew. So we're using a medley of mushrooms here. So we've got a selection of mushrooms, and we're putting in some onion, we're putting in or shallots, we're putting in some carrots, some winter vegetables in there as well, a little bit of herbs. All the recipes up on Island M's Facebook page as well as mm. Virgin Media One website. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to crack on. We're going to get a pot on the go here. So I've got a pot here with some hot olive oil, and we're going to pop in there some shallots. Okay, so we've got some shallots going in there. We're going to put some carrots in there as well. We're going to put in there some celery, and I'm putting in there some winter veg as well. So I've got some I parsnips. Mean, this is so hard. It's so healthy as well, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. All those vegetables in it. Absolutely, yeah. And with the mushrooms, what we can do is we can chop those mushrooms up tiny if there's people that don't like mushrooms. But what could I put in the, instead of mushrooms? Tofu. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of tofu. You know, listen, this is, this is a plant-based dish, so it's meat-free. So okay. but what, you could actually put meat into this if you wish to, you know, so you could put your meat of your choice. I'm actually just chucking in a few lentils in there as well just to give it that meaty taste. So you wouldn't have to put the mushroom okay. in. But the mushrooms will give that, that kind of a meatier flavour and meaty taste. So what we do is we're going to put those in there as well, all those vegetables. And, and why a... loads of different mushrooms? Just there's different flavours, there's different textures, there's different tastes. So taste, texture and colour is the way that I'd like to cook. So some of them are going to give a much more of a meatier taste. Some of them like the, the king oyster mushroom there. Yeah. When you slice it up, it's like a sponge, so it's going to absorb all those flavours. The one you just chop well. them up Absolutely, roughly. just slice them up. Yeah, just slice these up like kind of like a scallop if you wanted to just push them in, like cut them in like that. Oh, okay. So they can just go in there like that. I'll keep that one there. So then we'll put in our selection of... Mushrooms go in here as well. That's so say, like a bowl of hell. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so if you wanted to, just crack this up a little bit. If you wanted to, you can get like the the wild mushrooms, and a lot of the supermarkets now do the the packs of the the varying mushrooms and stuff like that. Um, some of the farmers markets as well have a great selection of those yeah, too. Yeah. And if you can't get hold of them, don't worry about it too much because you can still use the classic like button mushroom and portobello mushroom if you wanted to. But again, I suppose at the end of the the, the clues in the dish it is a mushroom casserole. Yeah, of course. You know, so again, if you don't like mushrooms, you'd probably steer clear of this. Like, you know, what I mean. So what we would do is we would cook this down for real time about 8 to 10 minutes. Okay. In TV time, it's about 35 seconds, OK? So we'd cook that down because what we've got is about sort of about six or seven strangers that don't know each other. Is there, is there stock or water Absolutely. in Absolutely. We're going to put that in there in a second. OK. So all we're doing now is we'd put a lid on this, would allow all those flavours to kind of introduce to each other. We're going to put in there a little bit of red wine as well, or port or whatever you have, because we're going to have quite a bit of that lying around at Christmas. Mm -hmm. yeah, There's a small yeah. little bit of red currant jelly just for sweetness. You could use cranberry juice if you're cranberry sauce if you wanted to. And a little bit of tomato puree you can pop in there as well, OK? What I've got here is just an added flavour. So here is some umami powder, all right, which is basically... Uh, it's a kind of a flavour enhancer, but it's natural. And, it's and what's made. that other one? Are they both here? That's a uh, puccini dust. So, it's again, it's... Put, it's the, ah, it's come powder. on. So Puccini a, dust yes. and umami butter. Uh, uh, umami powder. Powder. So all they are are flavour enhancers, OK? And then what we're going to do is we're going to pop into there our stock. So what we've got here is about 400 millilitres of a hot stock goes into this, OK? Vegetable stock, Vegetable obviously. stock goes in there, absolutely. Now, what you could have done, before I put the stock in, you could have gone left and right. You could have put in flour, stirred it in, and then put your stock in. OK, so, but then what I'm doing is I'm thickening this one with corn flour. So this one will actually end up being a gluten-free dish as well. So I like okay. to kind of showcase and yeah. give kind of varying things. So what we've got, we've got all that mixture in here, OK? And then what we've got there is a few tablespoons of corn flour. And what we would do is once that comes up to the boil, which is just starting to do, we'll pour in our corn flour and that then will start to thicken up that dish, all right? So all we do is we leave that bubble away for a little bit. So you wouldn't just take a scoop of the actual corn, corn flour and put it in there. And put a it little in. bit of cold water, stir it up, and okay. then put that into there, okay? And then what we do is leave a lid on that, and what I would do is I would then peel my spuds. So all I've done is I peeled and finely sliced some potatoes. Lovely. You can put them for a few pro a food process if you want. And this is what your stew will end up like once it's thickened. And I mean, all we do... To be fair, that stew looks delicious there, And again, of course it is, because I cooked it, <laughs> all right? So all we do then, the first layer of potatoes, we're going to put two or three layers of potatoes down, and we're dealing these like we deal out cards, all right? Mm. I say if you can use a food processor or a, food, uh, a grater, or you can just slice these, I just slice these with a knife. And all we do is we just arrange these. Don't worry too much about the first layer because you're never going to see that. It's going to be buried underneath, OK? And then what happens is we can just press that down a little bit and then the, kind of the pH of the resistance, the one that you see is the one that you would arrange okay. and you'd put and one then just into the oven then. And then we're going to bang that into the oven about 200 degrees for about... We're going to cover it with some foil, OK, so we don't need to brown. Cover that with foil, pop that into the oven, and right. you'd leave that covered for approximately about 40 minutes and then take the cover off just so it browns for the last little bit. And then what you get is you get this lovely... Look at that. OK. 
So Very we, good. All we do then is we just dish this up. OK, I'll let you dish it up and I'm going to taste it. This is like an Ireland Dame Bush Tucker trial. <laughs> Here we go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that good. voted out. Here we go. Oh, come on. No. Oh. Oh, hot. The, <laughs> the taste is delicious. It's just the texture of the mushrooms, but... <laughs> I love the love the rest of it, Paul Knapp. Thank you so much. A, a winter warmer mushroom medley of a medley, actually a mushroom medley hot pot. Lovely stuff. Thank you. No worries, buddy. <laughs>